penetrate an impenetrable object. And it can go through the fabric of the screen and still hit the, the diaphragm of the microphone. You get that kind of stuff as you're breathing, right? It can still happen, but you put a, uh, a solid object between, you can even do the shush technique. This is the shush technique, it's the same thing. It will eliminate the plosives almost entirely. Another thing to do is if you have a smile-shaped voice, it's harder for the plosives to have the same uh, channel of air. So if you've got like a flat thing, that can really cut like a knife. And if you've got more of a, um, uh, a bird in motion smile lips, the, the, the wave disperses that much quicker. And especially if you've got something solid to help break up the wind, Ah, it actually works pretty well here too. So as we use the shush in a pinch or a pop screen with, I like to put a pencil or a straw across it, you get rid of so much of that. And your mouth is supposed to be wet. I know that's like <laughs> uncomfortable. Someone came back. Okay, so wet is fine. <laughs> no, nope, someone's leaving. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, some people swear by having a green apple. Some people find that that really helps balance the pH balance of their mouth. That's their mouth. You gotta experiment with you. Some people love a, uh, like a tepid tea with honey and some lemon in it. Delightful. But what no one, and this is a life lesson for everyone here, whether you are six or 96, water's not a lubricant. So with water not being a lubricant, <laughs> there's a few things you shouldn't use water for. And one of them is to lubricate your mouth and throat to be able to do this work. But you can like ingest you know, some people will do what's called oil pulling. You know, if you can put an edible oil like coconut or olive or avocado in the mouth and just swish it around, right? You're allowed to swallow that if you want. I'm not here to tell you you can't. Because we cook with it, we eat it, we ingest it, it's healthy fat, it's fine. But a lot of people would choose to rather, you know, than swallow a sip of coconut oil. They might swish it around their mouth, maybe gently gargle and spit it out. And what have we done? We've definitely lubricated the mouth and throat, right? So while saliva is uh, quite effective at that, reminder that the Grand Canyon um, is like that because of water, and the throat should never be like the Grand Canyon where it's stripped away of all its protective barriers. And that's what we do when we guzzle water. We're trying to clear the debris in our throat, but we're also clearing the natural oils and saliva that allow us to have a less friction-based throatal journey. <laughs> I knew you wanted to come with a question right after that. What did I come back to? <laughs> uh, wet, moist, friction throat. <laughs> uh, mouth stuff with Brendan Hunter. <laughs> Not what you think it is. <laughs> Was that your whole question? No, that's it. <laughs> then I think I'll, I'll take the one at the back and then we'll come to this side. Right. Well, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying the pros and cons of the big players. Uh, you know, for, for my experience with, you know, sites like Voices and Voice123, um, you know, the, the, the tiered membership is frustrating. You know, you can pay nothing and get one audition a month, and you can pay $300 a year and get, you know, five auditions a day. But you can also pay 900 bucks a year and get 20 auditions a day. Or you can pay $1,500 and you can get, like, the top of, you know, before anyone else sees it. And then usually the 10 people that are willing to pay that are good enough that they book the role and then it never, ever goes to the other tiers. It's so, like, those are things to know about because I get it and yet I, I find it really frustrating. Uh, places like B.O., no, V... Sorry. Uh, places like Bodalgo and Vio Planet, you can see how I get to Vio Planet there. Um, I know, it's kind of funny, right? Like, you're at an anime convention, it happens. Uh, <laughs> we're just humans, we're weird. Um, but uh, Bodalgo and Vio Planet were lovely because it was a one time fee, and during COVID it was like 220 or 250 uh, US per year. And that was nice because it wasn't so daunting. And also there was no invitation algorithm like the major players have. And if anybody's not familiar with that, this means that even if you paid the 300, 900, 1200 dollars, the, the site still invites you to the auditions they deem you to deserve to be invited to. That sucks, that's annoying. And as you go through the year and you don't book 
what they consider to be a ratio that they, I don't know, uh, approve of, yeah, that's fine, then your algorithm goes down. And you're like, this is, this is not how it should go, but this is how those companies do it. So if you apply in Podolgo, they don't do that, and they have a flat fee, and you just go on the site, you choose what to look for, and, and you know, it did have audiobooks, it did have commercials, it did have character work. It just doesn't have the volume of Voice123 and Voices, but, I mean, Voices advertises that they have 100,000 voice actors. I don't think that's good for either side of the table, like the client nor the VA talents that are like, oh, I want to be on the site with 100,000 voice actors. Nor should the client be like, oh, I can't wait to get way more auditions than I need. Like, it's like, feels like it's backwards to me, but I'm talent. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a brilliant business person who's going to make a lot of money. I'm just gonna <laughs> continue being an artist, I guess. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of people, especially if they want to do character work, you know, casting call 